wanted to do a takedown exercise as I haven't really done one in a while. And I found this reference clip, you can kind of see it scrolling there in the background. I found that on YouTube and imported it into Maya. And that got me to thinking that importing reference is kind of one of those things that's given me trouble off and on over the years. And I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to just kind of say, show how I might do it, or maybe show you the easy way and then the way that I like to do it, which is maybe not as easy. Okay, the easy way I'll show you here in a new document, and typically I'll take an orthographic uh, camera like a, like the front or the top. Uh, we'll use the top here in this instance. And the easiest way to do it is to use the image plane function within the viewport. So if I go up here to view, and then I come down here to image plane, I have the option to import an image or import a movie. So I'll click movie. And I know the clip is on the desktop. It's this takedown ref. And there it is. It's brought in for me. And if you see, I scroll through the timeline. It's matched uh, one frame for one frame. And if I move here to the four camera view, um, there's a couple things here I can do is I can, you know, use the image center attributes over here to place it within the frame that I want to. Uh, you can see here I put it in the top frame so it's flat in perspective and in the front view and the side view you can't see it. So one other thing, if I go to the attribute editor, let's say I only want to see this in my top view. You know, I don't want to see this while I'm playing around in perspective, it's going to be distracting. Uh, what I can do is, you know, make sure I highlight the top view. And in the display, right now it's in all views. I can just do looking through camera and then list which one I want. And now that image plane is only in my top view. And then the way that I'll usually do it is I'll basically create a polygon plane in Maya and bring in an image sequence on top of it as a texture. So typically I'll open the movie file here with QuickTime Pro and export out an image sequence. In this case, I did have an extra step because I had two views, so I did bring that into DaVinci, uh, DaVinci Resolve um, and composite those two together before I created this movie file. But once I'm in QuickTime, I can go here to File, Export, and then one of the options here is Move Movie to Image Sequence. And that's what we want. You can go into the options and, and play around with those. Typically, I like to do a PNG sequence. Uh, and then I'll put that, uh, say, on my desktop. I'll create a new folder and we'll just call it ref. And we'll put it in there and we'll just call it takedown ref is fine. And if I hit save, you can see now I'm exporting out that image sequence. And if I bring over uh, the desktop folder here, there it is, ref. I can open that up. I have uh, image one down to image two, each one of the images corresponding to a frame of that video. And if I come back here into Maya, I said I was going to create a polygon plane and use that image sequence as a texture for this piece of geometry. So I've created that plane here and I've made it roughly the same size as the video. And I would next thing I want to do is right click it and go to assign new material. And I typically choose a Lambert. If I go there, I would rename it to, you know, whatever I decided image sequence material or whatever. And if you go here on the color attribute and hit this checker box, that allows you to assign a file to this Lambert. So I've hit file. And now I can put an image into this texture. Uh, I can also use an image sequence, which is what we're going to do. So if I uh, hit the folder there, here is my desktop. There is the ref. Here is the 70 some odd images. I'll just pick the first one, hit open. And if I check use image sequence, now you can see it's not laid out right, but now I've got that image sequence just like we were doing before in the first example. 
Now, I told you there was the easy way and there was my way. This is where my way gets uh, a little interesting because now we have to kind of fix how this texture is being displayed. So I've just clicked on the Place 2D Texture tab. And one thing that we want to do is uh, hit this coverage, and I'm just holding the Control key and I'm sliding back and forth here. And so that's one thing right there is going to fit this in the X value. It doesn't have to be super precise. I mean, it's just reference, right? And then if I hold control and I slide here in this value, then I can bring that up like so. So now I have my image reference or my video reference all taken care of. So why is it that I like to do it this way instead of with the image plane? Well, the first reason is an image plane is kind of locked to that camera. So if you're zooming in and out in that camera, you know, that image plane kind of stays in place. And the only way that you can kind of move it around, if you remember, were those attributes, uh, I believe it was the, uh, the center value, you know, moving it in the X and the Y and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of tedious. Uh, whereas this, now this is just a piece of geometry that I can move like I move any other piece of geometry wherever I want. So that's one thing. It's flexible in that sense. Another reason is, and I don't know why this is, <laughs> but sometimes Maya doesn't like movie files. Uh, I'll do it one day and it works fine, and then the next day it decides, no, it's not going to work. But I never have an issue using an image sequence. So that's the second reason. And maybe one last reason, I won't go into detail here, uh, it's kind of a video on its own, is you can retime your reference. Uh, say I wanted this takedown. You know, I, I liked everything leading up to it, but I wanted this actual takedown to be half as long. I could go in here and modify the expression to do that. And that's all for this week. Thanks for watching.